what we, what's the financial return on this stuff? What? And uh, and like, you know, I'm not sure if I can take a risk. And uh, can you tell me a little bit more about this? And so there's, um, you know, there's so many questions that we hear in the world and that are, that were so beautifully articulated by our audience members. How do we get to the heart of these things that really matter? And so luckily for us, we have two colleagues from IAX who are here to engage with those important questions. First, we'll hear from Paul Wojcik, who is IAX's new chief financial officer. He spent 25 years at large global investment management firms, including as chief risk officer for T. Rowe Price Group. Paul's background also includes, wait, degrees in engineering, computer science, artificial intelligence, business, and public administration. And so it sounds like just the thing to help lead this work in 2023. And then we'll hear from Kathy Tuyen. IX is country director in Vietnam, and you also bring with your two decades of experience in international development and impact investing, even before it was called impact investing, and including with the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, in Vietnam. So, Paul and Kathy, I'm delighted to turn it over to you. Thank you, Zhu. This has been a great meeting. It's been a real pleasure to meet all of you. And it's a great honor to be able to speak to about a topic that is neither near to my heart. And that is the mainstreaming and formalizing of the inclusion of social impact in the investment process. Like Sue said, I'm relatively new to IIX. It's only recently, or earlier this year, I spent 25 years in quantitative portfolio management. Uh, I'm really thrilled to join the team at IIX. It's an incredible team, which is really pushing it sustainable and equitable finance forward. Okay, so speaking of sustainable finance, it has been great to see the interest in the topic broadly growing over the past couple of decades. I mean, the interest in orange finance, especially evidenced by this meeting that we're in, is especially encouraged. Um, but issuance did tick down last year, and so there do seem to be some problems. I'll just keep talking. And so uh, investors that want have a social impact, a positive social impact through their investment portfolios do face barriers. And some of those barriers can be addressed through adequate impact, verification, and measurement. These are areas where IIX spends a lot of time as a global leader. But remember, the vast majority of investors don't even try to include social impact in their investment portfolios. Or they've taken small steps by making small allocations to assets that are specifically dedicated to social impact. It's good, but it's not enough. Think about the opportunity that we have to influence the big set of assets that is impact blind. That could really accelerate things. Let's talk about how we can do that. But first, we need to set the stage by thinking a little bit about broadly how investment portfolios are constructed. So many of you know Harry Markowitz, the great economist who developed modern portfolio theory and won the Nobel Prize for that. Sadly, Spencer Markowitz passed away earlier this year, but he fundamentally and permanently changed the way investors think about risk and return. By thinking carefully about the interaction of risk and return, investors can build more optimal portfolios and have better outcomes for investors. On the slide, you can see one of the key equations of modern portfolio theory. The investor tries to optimize their expected return by optimize their portfolios by maximizing the expected return and minimizing the expected risk. Or to be precise, they actually have two parameters to control, traditionally called lambda one and lambda two. And they're optimizing lambda one times the portfolio return plus lambda two times the portfolio risk. By controlling lambda one and lambda two, the investor specifies their unique preferences towards risk and return, building their own personal optimal portfolio. If they don't care much about risk, that's fine. They can set lambda one high, lambda two low. If they want to track an index, they can set lambda two high, set lambda one low. It's very powerful stuff. And they can do this quantitatively by actually estimating forecast returns and volatilities and the correlations and interactions between those things. And that's important. But 
Equally important is that the framework is very useful even without numbers. Just by getting people to think about the interaction and risk and return, investors get better outcomes. Okay, but this is where it gets really exciting. So what if we had a third term of the equation, right? Lambda three and social impact. This is the impact to the world of our investment portfolio. And that can be defined according to the investor's preferences, right? It could relate to carbon emissions or poverty, health disparities, or in the context of the Orange Bond Initiative, it relates to SDG5, gender equality. Under this construct, the investor now has three parameters to control. She still has lambda one for the portfolio return and lambda two for the portfolio risk. But now she has lambda three to express her preference towards social impact. I love this formula, and here's why. There's no place to hide. If you're super passionate about gender equality, you can set lambda three very high. If you care a little bit, you can set lambda three low. If you don't care at all, well, that's sad. But you can set lambda three to be zero. And I think many of you are thinking, who would do that? And the answer is almost everybody's doing that, right? If you take the this like risk return impact equation, RRI equation, and set lambda three to be zero, so you don't consider social impact, you get the NPT equation that everybody's using now to build portfolios. Is that consistent with the investors' goals and their values? I bet that it isn't. By including lambda three and the social impacts into the investment process, you're internalizing all those effects on the world. By leaving it out, those things are just externalities. They're just things that happen in the world as a result of our investments, like pollution. And it's not, it's not really okay to leave those out of the investment process. I have two quick closing points. First, this thing can be quantitated, just like NPT, you can estimate their returns, estimate the uh, variances, and you can estimate the social return on investment and incorporate that, all that into your optimization. Please do that, that's great. But just, as, just like with NPT, it's valuable even without numbers. Just like NPT got us thinking about risk-adjusted returns, RRI gets us thinking about impact-corrected returns. I hope that becomes the norm. And then finally, I wanna talk about the interaction between risk and return and impact. And this statement is gonna be a little controversial and a lot of people push back on it, but here goes. Investments and assets that have a positive social impact can have better returns and reduced risk profiles. And so how can that be and why is that so? So think about it. There's a community of common interest that wants the impact-oriented enterprise to thrive because of the impact that it has on the world. So for example, governments and institutions might provide uh, financial support or technical assistance. The company might benefit from preferential subsidized funding. The company's customers might think favorably about the company's products and pay a little bit more because of that positive feeling. Or in times of stress, like an external shock, like COVID, that community of common interests can come together to help that impact-oriented enterprise survive, again, because of its impact on the world. But that takes a significant risk off the table. Nobody would create a portfolio without thinking about the portfolio's risk and return. The hope is that soon nobody will create a portfolio without thinking about the risk and return and impact. Through IIX's Women's Livelihood Bond, especially WLB5, the first orange issuance, it demonstrates how effective this can be. WLB5 creates value for investors, for socially impact-oriented enterprises, and for the broader community that has an impact and interest in gender finance. I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague, Kathy, country director for Vietnam, and she can talk about the work going on in that country to optimize risk, return, and impact. Good afternoon, everyone. It has been my great pleasure to see how we practice uh, balancing risk, return, and impact at the local level in Vietnam through our impact investment readiness, Vietnam IIRB budget. 
Hi, Axel has been delighted to partner with Global Affairs of Canada, GIC, to run visa project between 2022 and 2027, and truly reflect some of the pillars of the Orange Movement, which also aligns well with Canada's feminist international assistance policy. The IIRB project aims to create a sustainable livelihood and improve economic well-being of sustainable groups in Vietnam, particularly for women and people in disadvantaged areas making it well aligned with the overarching goals of the uh, Orange Movement to mobilize capital at large scales for gender equality. Over the last year and a half, uh, under the IIRB project, we have conducted a series of research papers for landscape data. We provided uh, impact investment readiness training courses to almost 50 local enterprises and we provided tailor-made technical assistance and capital raise support to two women-owned women-led local businesses the foundation of uh, <laughs> okay okay um, the foundations of the IIRB work in Vietnam is through embracing risk, return, and impact approach at all is just a focus group by uh, using the digital input assessment tool, IIX values, to collect data directly from the communities last month in Vietnam. IIX value is a digital and data-driven solution built on a decade of IIX experience for enterprises to identify, measure, and analyze their impact. Um, this is the, the world's first uh, impact verification solution for every type of organizations, whether they are for profit or non profit, uh, social enterprises, uh, finance, or corporations. And we are very proud that it has been designed by and for the Global South, um, in line with the commitment of the Orange Movement to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the IIX value impact verification solution does not only identify, measure, and analyze the value created by every company, it also gives the communities the power to verify the positive impact brought about in their lives. The end conclusion uh, is a very uh, very feasible data power impact assessment report that has taken into account the women at the last mile and given them a voice and a value. Uh, building on IAX uh, values and capabilities, we are excited to share that uh, we have developed a shed of orange rating SOR system, a technology optimized system developed as a certification and five point rating tool for orange boards. The SOR system is powered by IX values to, to make the market more transparent. As some of you have questioned, by directly confirming the impact with women at the last mile. In this way, we can transition from the traditional um, top down uh, approach of impact measurement and reporting to the bottom up and more participatory approach. Uh, the SOR system does not allow the bond issuance to be dominated by a certain part of the world. Instead, it is handled by a regional team who understands the uh, risk, return, and impact on the ground. So as you can see, IIX has already adopted this approach to scale uh, local businesses in and beyond Vietnam. Our intention is to source uh, impact enterprises and provide them with the required data and technology support to help them grow, mature, and become investment-ready. 
Our platforms uh, equipped impact enterprises uh, with the right landscape data, required for stable growth, uh, ecosystem linkages, investment strategies, and impact measurement and uh, uh, monitoring uh, on the ground to ensure research return and impact. In Vietnam, through our IIRV project, in partnership with GAC, um, we have been developing the uh, impact investment ecosystem. And our goal is to eventually um, enable Vietnamese enterprises to become part of the oriented movement. Um, I would like to end my presentation with an actual story from the field. So let's meet Maya, um, who is a, a worker at a garment factories in southern Vietnam under our women livelihood, WLB1. Uh, I asked Dispers a loan to a fund which then uh, Dispers uh, cash loans to underserved and uh, low-income uh, women workers uh, at affordable um, pricing to gain access to essential uh, products and uh, services. So utilizing uh, this cash loan, uh, Maya was able to buy uh, essential products and services for her household, um, which then helped her to um, use up to two hours of housework every day, and then that uh, increase her annual income by 20%. So Maya is the only one of many Vietnamese women who have uh, successfully transitioned to more sustainable livelihoods. Um, as uh, the last mile clients of a women livelihood bonds. Uh, through IAX values and the shares of orange uh, rating system, we can attract how women increase ownership of access, uh, improve productivity, and more importantly, uh, they become financially um, resilient. The orange bonds uh, can truly reach women at the last mile. And we want to see uh, this grow and generate more impact uh, in our next four years of the IIRB project in partnership with the GAC. Uh, Vietnam is expected to become an orange led country in Asia and Pacific. Thank you very much, and I will hand it over again to you soon.